Welcome to Green Japan. The shipping industry is betting on ammonia as one of the most promising future fuels as part of a cleaner energy mix. It's versatile, abundant, you can store it and transport it. But for ammonia fueled shipping to become a reality, several things need to happen. Let's find out more. The shipping industry is responsible for about 3% of global CO2 emissions. A report from the IEA says that to hit zero emissions by 2050, hydrogen-based fuels, including ammonia, should account for 30% of maritime fuel. There's no silver bullet for zero carbon marine fuels, but ammonia is easier to store than its green fuel compared to hydrogen. It's also a safer way to transport hydrogen itself. Japanese shipping and logistics company NYK Lines and IHI Power Systems are developing the world's first tugboat that runs on ammonia. We have to achieve net zero by 2050. Uh, we have to eliminate emit the greenhouse gas. Ammonia is the most uh, advantageous uh, solution, we think. Uh, because firstly, that is zero emission and does not emit any greenhouse gas. Um, but, and also, we have already have uh, some experience to transport uh, ammonia. There are significant design challenges with ammonia as it's toxic to humans and aquatic life. What is NYK doing to mitigate these concerns? Safety is our most important and fundamental top priority items. Currently, what we are doing is uh, risk assessment is in progress, uh, which is held uh, with uh, Japanese governmental body, I mean the Japan Coast Guard. And we are now identifying the possible risk and also deliver the solutions as well. Made from hydrogen and nitrogen, ammonia is already widely used as a fertilizer and in cleaning products, but the production process at the moment is far from clean. Here at the Fukushima Renewable Energy Institute, Japanese engineering company JGC, along with AIST, used electricity produced from renewables to make so-called green ammonia. Cleaning up the ammonia production process could have significant benefits. JGC plans to build a green chemical plant in the Fukushima region to make the most of locally produced renewable energy as part of the drive to cut the CO2 currently produced by ammonia and eventually go even further. The amount of CO2 is 1-2% to of the world uh, emission, but also uh, the ammonia can be used for another sector, a uh, new market for energy like a power generation and shipping, so that we can reduce huge amount of CO2, not just 1 to 2 percent of the current emission, but much more. We expect maybe 10, 20 percent of whole CO2 emission, because it is used for the energy sector. And that's exactly what's in the pipeline in Heikenham. In a world first, Jera, Japan's largest power generator, will trial a project at its coal-fired thermal plant to use 20% ammonia, with the aim of running fully on ammonia by 2050. Once operational, the power plant will produce roughly enough electricity to serve the neighbouring city of Hakenan, a city with a population of around 70,000. Ammonia is already used at the plant, so scientists have been able to lean on existing technology and knowledge. Crucially, however, a new supply chain will have to be created using traditional ammonia along with carbon capture, so-called blue ammonia. So uh, we have to uh, make a, a new uh, supply chain from the uh, outside of Japan. Now we are uh, thinking the blue ammonia for the using, and also the, we will develop the green ammonia. But the uh, green ammonia is uh, not still uh, in the developing phase, and the volume is uh, relatively small. Ammonia has significant potential, and while challenges, including the cost, remain, it's hoped the price of renewable electricity will continue to fall, making green ammonia a viable clean fuel for the future.